Because sleep is something most of us do automatically, parents don't often think about the fact that they're teaching their child a skill, a skill that's going to stay with them for life. It's important to remember that all children are different. We're all unique and we all have different needs when it comes to settling to sleep. What works for one child may not work for another, even within the same family. So tuning into your child to determine what relaxes and calms them, or perhaps what makes them fearful at night, will help you to reflect and think about and understand what will work best for them, responding to them, reassuring them. Baby needs to be fed once, once to two hours. You've told it in the hospital, so you know what to expect. But you're not told after they stop feeding, they might still continue to wake up. <laughs> so, and did you having, find... having not known anyone that's had a child that had had that doesn't sleep very well at all, it was quite it was quite a shock. Yeah. Yeah. But you, you wake up quite often. Regularly. Yeah. So. Uh, in general, it's every two hours, two, three hours. Mm -hmm. You know, when you're measuring the weight, he obviously was going for his weight checks and then one of the time the weight was low and it wasn't increasing. So I think um, that the advice we were given is to continue breastfeeding him, you know, more and more. And I think at that point, Lela became like uh, quite paranoid that, oh, he's not getting weight. And then sometimes in the middle of the night when because obviously when Lela, Lela feeds him, she has to transition from where she's feeding him to the cot. So in that process, if she puts him down, he sometimes just wakes up. And then, you know, when I go, yeah. it sometimes works, it sometimes doesn't work. I find it very difficult to manage my emotions and my feelings. And um, I'm, ve I'm very upset. And um, so, yeah, it's, it's obviously no good on both of us. And I can only imagine that when he wakes up in the middle of the night and he sees himself probably in the dark on his own in his bed, he's... He's obviously wondering where everyone is and why is it so quiet. Yeah. Um, so it's probably a bit difficult from this perspective for him, I guess, um, okay. to understand that he's safe and, you know, we're around, we're sleeping and he can go back to sleep safely. It's really important to talk to parents about sleeping when their child gets to um, one years plus. Um, and we talk about the separation between parents and children. So we have that physical separation where children will go to sleep in a different room and then we have to talk to them about that emotional separation that they also might be feeling very anxious about. Um, we talk to them about the baby brain and go through that process of containment to talk to them about how they're feeling, any worries or concerns they might have, any anxiety they might have um, because now that their baby's in a different room to them they can um, express some um, fear about putting their baby in a different room. We would always advocate that um, parents and children, it's really important that sleep is pivotal to them for happiness um, and for their self-worth, their self-being and their self-esteem. Um, when both parents are feeling very tired, then that can cause um, depression, anxiety and that can heighten that you know the anxiety about separating at night time. So the Solihull approach is about recognising emotions in parents and children and supporting parents to tune into their child who's growing and developing faster than at any other time in their lives. The world of a small child is rapidly changing for them as they discover new things every day. They learn about what's safe and unsafe from their parents, family, and other trusted carers. And while the way they express themselves is still very infantile, they're learning about emotions and how they work, how to manage them. And they'll pick up on emotional cues around them, tuning in to any messages about whether it's safe and okay to be separate. So if a parent feels overwhelmed, is exhausted, has worries about sleep themselves, they may find it more difficult to convey that sense of security to their child. Checking in on your own emotional well-being can make a big difference and talking through with a close friend or relative about how you might be feeling and experiencing sleep. For example, whether the situation stirs any of your own memories 
from the past can really help. Professional advice may be considered if events are frequent and if they began around known stressors, or if significant or persistent stresses are present.